bless god bless <clears throat> how's everyone doing on this beautiful wednesday <laughs> pray all is well pray that your morning's gotten off to an awesome start but if not hit the reset button and start all over again um i wasn't sure about coming on i haven't um posted anything in a minute just if I can be transparent, just kind of going through my own little situations. But God remind me that just because I'm going through, that does not give me um, the okay not to reach out and encourage someone else. Because when I encourage someone else, God always pours back into me. And sometimes I'm like, Lord, I don't have anything to give. He said, give what you got. And so I'm learning that in this season, I can only give what I have. And what I have in this moment, in this season, is just a word of encouragement. That no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, keep pushing. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. I was... um looking at um this young lady that i follow and how she's homeless and she have four kids i do believe i think her youngest being maybe three or four i can't really remember but she's been living um in her car or you know different ones have rushed out you know rushed out to help her and you know gotten in rooms and different things like that you know, just trying to keep them, keep her afloat. Um, and it brought me back to the time when I was homeless. Yes, homeless. Homeless don't necessarily always mean when you're just on the street. Homeless is when you don't have a resident, when you don't have an address. And at one point I was there. Um, this was before my husband passed. And how some people know this, some people don't but I'm feeling led to um, give this testimony. Um, I lived in a hotel for months. Um, that was one of my lowest moments. And there were moments that when I went to the hotel, I felt grateful. I felt thankful. I had a bed. I had a roof. If we needed to shower, we had that. We had lights. But I still felt low. I still felt less than. And how I would do things to upset my husband because I wanted him to go. because I was ashamed and I was embarrassed. And I didn't want anyone to go through that with me. I wanted to go through that alone because of the shame, because of the embarrassment. And we was there for some months. And I didn't have people that understood. I didn't have the support that I needed. But I kept going. I kept pushing. Because I didn't know what else to do. And I had my kids with me. All but the oldest. She wasn't living here at the time. And my other daughter with the kids, she stayed with my mother at the time. 
So I just had the youngest two. And that was the hardest. That was the hardest. Um, so when you see me, you may see a smile, but you don't see the brokenness. You may hear laughter, but you don't know the pain. You don't know the embarrassment. You don't know the shame. You don't know. That's why it's so important to be kind, to give a word of encouragement, uplift someone because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what they're suffering through. You have no idea. And how this young lady, getting back to her story, she was on the highway and she started having car trouble. She's got her kids. I don't know where the husband at. I think she said he might have been at work. But she started, you know, and it's hot. Now I forgot where she lived. Um, oh, I can't think of where, but it's hot. And she's got her kids and this car is acting up and it's running hot and, you know, and everything. And how she documented her situation and how people began to come and show up, you know, to get the kids, to get them something to eat, to calm her down. And, you know, the your people don't understand that when you are a parent, especially a mother, it does, it, it's hard to explain. But when you trying to protect your kids and be there for your kids and, um, and that doesn't mean you're not going to make any, any mistakes. But when you know your heart is right and you're doing all you can to do all you can. And she was in um, how she was just doing what she could and how different people began to show up and to help her. And um, she began to just cry out. Sometimes we hold stuff in because you can't let everyone know what you're going through. You can't let everyone know what you're dealing with. I'm sure everybody done heard this saying, a closed mouth won't get fed. And that's true. But you also got to be careful who you let know you're hungry. You can't let everybody know that you're hungry. You can't let everybody know that you're going through. You can't let everybody know that you're struggling. Because first thing they want to do is diagnose why are you hungry. You can have a spiritual hunger. You can have a natural hunger. You can have an anxiety hunger. You don't know. You do not know. And how different ones begin to show up and show love. That's what it's all about. Don't come and start questioning why are you in your car? Because you know what? When we are going through, we are already beating ourselves down. We don't need anyone else to come in and do that for us. If you're going to show up, show up with love, show up with compassion, show up with resources. And I tell you how God began to come in and just begin to bless her blessings after blessing. We got this resource. We got this to help you. We got this for the kids. You need their hair done. We're going to take care of that. You need this. We're going to take care of that. And she was saying how she was in the, um, I guess like the shelters, they will put you up in like a hotel for so many days. And I think she said she had I'm not sure how she said she did it, but it was another lady, um, I think made a, uh, had a child or something and how she, somehow she divided it. I'm, I can't even remember how she did it. And she brought that family in. That's what it's all about. Do what you can do to ease the worry, to ease the weight off of what someone else is going through. Your life may be on mountaintop now, but you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So I'm saying all that to say this. No, a closed mouth won't get fed, but you can't let everybody know that you're hungry either. You got to know who you can go to and say, hey, I'm hungry. Hey, I'm struggling. Hey, I feel like I'm about ready to throw in the towel. I feel like I'm at the end of my rope because there's sometimes you get there. There's sometimes you get there. 
And there was a moment in time that I was there. People didn't know the hurt. People didn't know the pain because you're taught to keep it together. You're taught, don't let anyone know. And so many people are walking around broken. So many people are walking around in pain. So many people are walking around full of shame. Why? Because there's no one to go to that will feed you where you're hurting, that will feed you where you're struggling, that will feed you where you're battling. Because if they're good, they're not worried about your situation. They're not worried about what you're going through. And so I've learned, as so many others, you cover it up. But what I've learned that I don't care how many extensions you put on, I don't care about the eyelashes you put on, I don't care about the makeup that you put on, at some point, at some point, none of that is going to matter. None of that is going to matter. We're so quick to beautify things. We're so quick to um, cover up pain, hide pain. Until you just have a breakdown and you say, I can't go no further. I can't do this anymore. And I'm going to tell you, when I was in that hotel, like I said, I had my good days and I had my bad days. I had my grateful days and I had my ungrateful days. I had my days when I went in and I'm just saying, Lord, help me. There is some time in life you will go through things I don't know why that shut off, but you will go through things and you will need God to help you. And when you call on him with your whole heart, you can't worry about what nobody's going to think. You're not, you can't worry about what people are going to feel. If you need God to help you, call on him. If you need him to show up in your life, call on him. You can't worry about what people are going to think. You can't worry about what people are going to feel. Call on him. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. There's moments I felt forsaken. There's moments I felt like he forgot about me. There have been moments and you will have those moments. Forgive me for that little, the devil don't want me to get this out, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to get it out. But I want to encourage somebody that no matter what you're going through, find someone to talk to, find someone that you can trust. If you're hungry, naturally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, find somebody. Pray, ask God to lead you to somebody. But don't, you can't go to everybody when you're hungry. You can't go to everybody when you're going through. You can't go to everybody when you're suffering. But God will lead you to someone that has a heart just like him. You know, even though they done Jesus how they did him, before he took his last breath, he said, Lord, he said, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't, they don't even understand. A lot of times when you don't want to help someone, when you don't want to show up for someone, you don't know that could be where your blessing is. I'm just saying. But watching her story and how it unfolded and how God just swooped in and blessed her because even she was being a blessing when she didn't have it. It's just like me trying to give you a jump and my battery is dead. My battery may be dead, but you know what? I'm going to do what I can do 
to get you a jump start. If I got to go to somebody else, if I got to get borrow one of them little tools, you know what? I'm going to get you back up and running. Whatever I have available to me, I'm going to do what I can to get you back up on your feet. That's just who I am. So I had really suppressed that story of my life, that testimony, that situation, because to me, that's dark. But God brought me out. God brought me out. And I thank God. Like I said, many people probably didn't even know that part of my story. Because we are ashamed. We are, you know, embarrassed. But when God brings you out, when God turns things around, and that's what he did for me, I could go on and on <laughs> about different things God has brought me through. So I have compassion. When I see people hurting, I have compassion. When I see people struggling, I have compassion. When I see people going through, I have compassion. Because you know, there was times, and I'm still there, where there were people that had compassion for me. And one thing I've learned is the ones that you think that will be there won't for whatever reason. We're not going to get into reason because, you know, we could write a book. But I thank God for those that was there. I thank God for those that when I went to you and I needed uh, 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 to borrow money uh, to pay for another night that you was there. There was time I went to different ones and I was turned down. And family members. I'm not talking. These wasn't strangers. These was family members. I felt so humiliated. I felt less than. And I struggle with that today. I struggle with that today. Because when I look back over the years that I struggled, I didn't make all the right decisions. But this but the decisions that I made that wasn't done out of malicious. Sometimes you do what you feel like you need to do in that moment. And a lot of my decisions was in that moment decisions. But I thank God that I'm not where I used to be. I'm still a work in progress. I still have a ways to go. But I know right now in my life, in this season, he had me in a place where he wants me to trust him. And a lot of people don't understand that. You know, he gave me a vision. If you have a king size bed, but you using twin sheets or a twin comforter, something is not going to be covered. I'm living in, I'm, I'm, I'm at a moment in my life where everything don't be covered. If I pull it up, the feet is out. If you cover the feet, the shoulders out. If you pull it to the left, the right is going to be your arm. Your right arm is going to be out, and vice versa. It seems like when I pay one bill, I can't cover another bill. If I do this, then this goes without. But God still provides. He still makes a way. He still open doors. And I thank God. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Do anyone want to live in lack? No. But sometimes that's your season. Everybody's season is not overflow. My overflow season is has not arrived yet, has not been manifested yet, but I know it's coming. If I keep trusting God, if I keep leaning and depending on God, because he is a jealous God. He don't want us to be so dependent on these things that are going to perish that we forget about him as our main source. So if God is, if God has you in a position 
where he is saying, just trust me. Just trust what I provide. Just trust my provision. Just trust your season of lack. Trust your season of not enough. Just give me what you have. Just give what you got. Just do what you can do. And I got you. I got you. So with that being said, like I said, I didn't want it to be this long, but I know God wanted me to get on, to give my testimony, to give my story, to let someone know that keep going, keep fighting, keep pressing, keep pushing. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. No matter where you, what you're going through, no matter what season you're in, trouble don't last always. Joy cometh in the morning. It's coming. It's coming. We got to understand his morning is not our morning. But it's coming. So hold on. Whatever you have, hold on. If you don't have a two fish, hold on. If you don't have a five loaves of bread, hold on. Whatever you have, hold on. And trust the multiplier. He has multiplied many things in my life. And I look around and I wonder, how did he do it? How did he do it? You know he done it when you can't figure it out. He has already come to my rescue in another situation. I will share that down the road. I didn't know how he was going to fix it. I didn't know how he was going to turn it around. And I did go hungry because I didn't have anyone that I felt that I could trust, that I could go to about the situation but he showed up in a way that I'm still I still can't believe it <laughs> it hasn't fully been manifested yet but I see it I see it and so with that being said be blessed be kind be compassionate be concerned be loving be all of that it costs you absolutely nothing because you don't know a person's story behind the smile, behind the wig, behind the eyelash, behind the makeup, behind the extensions. You don't know. There's a story behind all of that. There's a story. So with that being said, I'm going to hop off. I pray everyone have an amazing day. Don't allow any negativity to come your way. Don't you allow the enemy to speak negativity into your ears because what you allow in your ear, it goes into your heart. Guard your heart and do all you can do to be the best you that you can be. Until next time, be blessed.